The devil have you on that mouse, that what is it, a hamster wheel? Well, when I finish doing this, I'll stop. But now you ain't gonna stop. Because he knows you. He known you from a child. Nobody expect me to do anything. I got to prove myself. I got to prove myself. And he going to use that for the rest of your life. To, and you going to mess around and live your entire life and don't get close to the most high because you're trying to prove yourself. You better forget about you. The script, now, let me, let me give you the scripture. Matthew 16. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 16. I want to go to verse 21. I'm going to do this in the Amplified Bible uh, class. I love this scripture. The, 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 the teaching in this scripture, if saints could get it, if his assets could get it, and you keep it in your mind, you're going to be okay. This one scripture, this one scripture that I'm getting ready to give you, if you read it every day, if you spot it every day, just this one scripture, because when you spot this one, it's going to cause you to go to other scriptures because you want to know how do I do such and such. But if you got a good grasp from this scripture, you're kind of well on your way. Listen to it. Verse 21 says, from this time forth, Jesus, and that's the transliteration from, anyway, Jesus, or as I would say, Yeshua. Some say Yeshua. Yeshua began clearly. Oh, I love, I love my Savior. When he taught clearly. Especially when he dealing with his disciples. Clearly. Shep likes to be clear. Those I teach, I ask them questions. Does this make sense? That's my way of saying to you, I want to make sure you understand. Because I don't want you to stand before high and say, well, you put Shep in my life as a shepherd and as a pastor, but he never said, no, 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 no. Now, I wonder how you'd be able to come back and say, I think Shep probably asked you. Let's go back and let's review it. I think he probably asked you after he talked that, does this make sense? That was your opportunity to say so. We need to be clear on this. Like a judge in the courtroom, like a lawyer. You want to be clear on what's being said. From that time forth, Jesus began clearly to show his disciples, followers, like us. Like I can say for me, and I pray there's many others out there that are true disciples. That we must go to Jerusalem and suffer. So Christ is saying, my, me as an asset, now the Most High is sending me to Jerusalem and I'm going to suffer. Clear. He didn't, he didn't hem her around. Well, guys, I go there and somebody might get offended. Well, guys, I'm going to go down there and you know, sometimes when you're living for the Most High, somebody might be, you know. No, he's clearly let them know, I'm going there to suffer. Some of y'all have been in situations, listen to me, some people ain't going to hear this, to suffer. What? Suffer? I thought he loved me, yes. Yeah, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, shall suffer persecution. If your pastor haven't told you that, he ain't telling you the truth. As an asset in this kingdom, the kingdom of light, living in a world of darkness, they oppose each other. You are acting like light, you are of light, the darkness hates you. You are going to suffer some things here. This should be known by every believer. Shouldn't be asked no questions about it. Absolutely. Hands raised to him. Thank you, Chastity. Suffer many things at the hands of the elders. Hold up, hold up. Did you say the men at the club? No. Did you say the people in my job that's not saved? No. Elders. Elders and the high priest. That sounds like folk that are in the church. You telling me I'm gonna suffer from folk in the church? Real Christians gonna see, receive a lot of persecution, and you're gonna be surprised. A lot of it ain't gonna be coming from the world. All I will, it's gonna be the religious folk that don't want to go no further, and they're jealous of you for going farther, and you and you won't stop going farther. They gonna persecute you. I hope y'all heard what I just said. There are people they don't want to go no farther in Christ, and when they see somebody else endeavoring to go farther, they get mad at you. They'll turn you in. You watch as we go on. Brother going to turn in brother. Mother going, oh, we're getting ready to see some stuff. You, you better get some tough, tough skin. If you can't stand nobody disagreeing with you, you can't stand when nobody frown at you, you better hurry up 
and grow up. You need to hurry up and grow up. You're going to be one of the first fruit that fall from the tree. You know, the fruit get ripe, right? It don't take much wind. You want to be, in this case, a fruit that is continuing to grow and they have a tight relationship connection to the branch. The true vine. There's a wind coming that's going to blow and some folk going to fall off like dry leaves. Don't let that be you. This is why I labor. This is why I sit in this chair. Ain't nothing fancy about this. I'm not a create, uh, what they call a content creator that's doing all these fancy stuff. That ain't my job on here. <laughs> the ones that need me as an instrument of the most high, they, they ain't caring about the fancy. It's what's coming out of these And that devil hates me. I've been dealing with stuff for almost 30 years. I get up and I go forward. <laughs> Not almost 30 years. <laughs> I ain't got time to complain about it. Those that know me are closer to me. They know some things I suffer, have to deal with in my body. I may not always feel like sitting in this chair, but I sit here because you his asset. Now, one day I won't be sitting in here. I'll be free. I'll be able to lift what I want. Run as fast as I want. I won't be impeded. But because of the anointing on my life and how much I want to serve the most high, the enemy hates me. Huh? He hates me. Hmm. But then the future feeling is mutual. And I'm tired of him using you. I'm here to help you grow up. I'm here to help you get over yourself. And give it all to a higher. I'm here to encourage you to lay down your excuses and receive his strength. So as long as he gives me strength, I plan to be here. And they let this thing be up. Nothing fancy. If you're looking for fancy, you might as well go on somewhere else. You're going to get raw, uncut love and truth. That's what you're going to get. Some of the things I may say may sound harsh, but I guarantee you it's connected to a root of love. Anybody that know me know that's the case. If you're serious about the most high, said, I know you're serious, I'll spend time. I'll spend time with you. But if you ain't serious, listen to Shep. I'm saying it out of love. If you ain't serious, don't waste my time. I'm a man with certain limitations. So I put out a lot of energy just to do what I do. I do it because I love the most highness people, but I don't have time for people who think that it's dealing with an average church, some pastor that's just getting paid a salary. I don't get paid nothing. You don't see no cap ad, uh, what is it, cash app on here. I don't do that. The most high takes care of me. So when I sit in this chair, I am focused. I am so grateful, though, and I want to say this, for those that pray for me. There's some people, you love me and you pray for me, and I am so grateful. You don't know how much your prayers mean. They drown out the enemy's discouragement. I know there are people out there that feel like, well, you know, leaders and stuff, they don't want to be bothered with the common people. They don't want us praying and stuff. They're already they're strong. And they're, no, no, that ain't Shep. Shep. <laughs> Shep has gained some wisdom over the years. Okay? This is not an I thing. This is a we thing. I may be called a pastor, but you got to pastor somebody. You got to shepherd somebody. So there are people you're shepherding. What you need from those people is prayer, not no money. I don't ask nobody that, I don't ask people to send me money. The brother that sent me this back here, he, he actually texted me to ask me, could he send it? Because he know I ain't about that. And the Holy Spirit had me to tell him, kind of thought about it, but I said, yeah, you can go ahead. And he sent me that. And it mean a lot to me. Even though it's right there, sitting there. But it has the words on it that match my heart. He doesn't need my ability. He needs my availability. What does that mean? What I experienced back in Desert Storm, that has affected my body, 
and limited it in certain ways so for its muscles and all that. There are a lot of people that probably wouldn't give up. They'd probably be so depressed or whatever. I ain't got time to be depressed when on the inside of me is the asset. Yes, I am an asset, but the asset, the true asset, the Holy Spirit is in me. And he's telling me, don't give up. Give me this day. My daily bread. The asset in me tell me, we could do it today. He ain't giving me no promises that tomorrow going to be bed of ease and tomorrow there won't be no pain. That ain't what he's telling me. What he's telling me is I'm here with you and for you. Let's go. You want scripture for it? Romans 8, 26, I believe. Likewise, the spirit helpeth our infirmity. Infirmity means weakness. The church has come into this dogma of believing that they can't do stuff through pain. They can't do stuff through trouble. They can't go through the valley. The only way they can live for Christ is everything got to be grand. Where did you get this from? Read your Bible. True assets always suffer. Went through things. Paul prayed three times. Take this away from me. Because he felt like he couldn't handle it. What did the most I say? Oh my goodness, I better go get my son out. Because he, no, he didn't say that. He said, my grace ha, is sufficient for you. Whatever comes against you, you're going to be able to stand it. Why? Because I am with you. When you're mature, you'll find out that those are the words you want to hear. Now, people quote scriptures that talk about it a lot, but they don't really get the vision of it. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for what? Thou art with me. What David didn't say, what people focus on, is he's with me. Listen to what David said in the beginning. Yea, though I walk. He didn't say, Yea, I might. Yea, is forecasted. Yea, though I walk. Meaning, I'm in the valley. What is a valley? Valley has two higher, valley would be where my fingers are right there. A mountain here, a mountain there. When the sun shines, it's hard for it to come in the valley. You got to be prepared to go through days where you don't see the sun. But yet you wake up every morning and say, Holy Spirit, are you with me? He said, I'm right here. Not what Kirk Franklin say, GP, are you with me? No, I ain't talking about GP. Holy Spirit, are you with me? He said, I'm right here. Let's get it. Let's do it, Shep. No matter what you go through, I got you. Got you. Let's go. But if you want them people, you got to run with people that say, well, you know, you know, God, God ain't going to let this happen to you. And, and, and nah, he ain't going to let this happen to you. Man, you ain't grown up yet. Job lost everything. Yet he didn't lose everything. His spirit was still there. I meant the enemy scraped all the way down to his flesh. But what the enemy couldn't touch was his spirit. And what did the Most High do? Like a seed. The enemy was allowed to pull the skin off of the peach. The enemy was allowed to pull the flesh off the peach. The enemy may even be allowed to take the seed coat off of the embryo in the peach. But when the enemy went to reach for Joel's spirit, the Most High said, hands off. Why? Why would he allow the enemy to take the skin off of the peach, take the flesh off of the peach, and remove the seed coat off of the, off of the embryo, but not let him touch the embryo? You want to know why? Because the most high know I could plant him again. People were around talking about I lost everything, did you? Are you still saved? Are you still redeemed? Are you still breathing? You didn't lose everything. You just got to disconnect your from the mediocre messages of the church system that taught you you got to be blessed and rich and favored and uh, the natural thing. What about your spirit? You know what the most high told me? He said, you're a wealthy man. Ah, oh, y'all ain't ready. <laughs> he told this disabled veteran with all these limitations, you are a wealthy man. I got a wife of 38 years that loved me. I got three kids that I raised that loved me. Not that I think love me. They love me. They may not understand me and everything because I'm a difficult guy to understand in certain things, but they love me. And I got brothers and sisters in the faith that I fellowship with that love me. And because he knows how much I want to I appreciate him being a father and loving me, 
He's put that spirit in me to father, to be like a father type, to, to be there, to, to lead God and protect his people. And so I have others, young men, young women, who treat me like a father. And I treat them like sons and daughters. They're not my biological. But the most I said, I want you to show father love to them. And no matter what the world named them, I want you to name some of them. I want you to say things to them, to call out what's inside of them. See, you got to learn when something leaves your life, stop focusing on what left and do an inventory of what's still there. Ah. <laughs> Strengthen what remains. The enemy may have you chasing 20% that left and you won't appreciate the 80% that's still there. I'm talking the things in your life that the Most High has not taken. But people, because they are selfish and prideful, we tend to look at what we lost. What do you have left in the container? Sure, 10 years ago, he molested you. Sure, 10 years ago, he beat you up. She beat you up. Uh, 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 you gave her all your love and she walked out of you. She walked out on you. But you can't live the rest of your life through the lenses of she walked out. Look back on the inside and say, who's still here? Do your family, do your children love you? Has he given you at least one friend that's there? And if all of that is no, still, Most High says, I am here. So you know you walk. He don't want to hear our excuses. And that's one of the reasons why he's allowed me to live and live like I live. Go through the things that I go through. So anybody that look at me, you don't come and say, well, well, you know, I can't do it because. No, no. He's going to have representatives in the earth that people say, how in the world do you do it? How do you do it? And you should be able to come back and say, he's with me. <laughs> oh, you're going to have some broken areas in your life. Oh, yeah. You're going to have some bumps. You got something in your life that you say that's a favorite cup you got, right? You done had it for a while. Every time you pour Kool-Aid, you want to go in that cup. When we look at that cup at the top, we see a little area because you don't you don't drunk from it so long and your teeth come up against it. It got a little cut and whatever. Why are you still drink from that cup? There are better cups out there. Why are you still drunk from drink from that cup? That same yellow cup. Because that cup is an asset. People may not understand the value of that cup. Every time you came through, you drunk your water through that cup. You and that cup don't went through. So others will come in and they'll throw your cup away. But not you, because it means something to you. That's how we are. The faithful to the Most High, that's how we are to the Most High. He ain't going to throw us away. A young lady sent me a song. Well, actually, she sent it to my daughter. Well, both of them are my daughter. One's my biological daughter, and the other young lady is my honorary daughter. What an honor for somebody to say, I look at you as a father and you didn't actually produce them and to see the quality of their life and how much you love the most high. What an honor. Anyway, she sent it to my, my biological daughter who's also my, uh, well, she's my daughter and she gave it to me. And I, I started listening to that song, just a short song. Just, it seemed like a, maybe an ordinary song, but it was a song for me. I needed to hear that song. He used that song to open up like the windows of heaven and speak to me. I got this song maybe three or four days ago. I started listening to that song and tears ran down my face. Every morning he's with me. It talks about every morning, you know, how the Most High is there. And he started telling me how much he loved me. He took me back to my childhood. He took me in my adult life, my early marriage life, different places where I face challenges and I thought you could look like you're by yourself but the way he'll show me in the vision is like a light he's right there in the corner never were you alone Shep. in the foxhole with all those that armor on and wondering if the enemy gonna come in he's right there with me in the foxhole never are you alone do you hear me ask that just because you can't see him with your natural eye or hear him with your natural ear. If you belong to him, he's right there with you. While you're sleeping, he's there. 
And when you wake up, it's a new morning. My love is new every day for you. There ain't no staleness in his love. He was there when his cheeks were soft and no hair on it. When my mom had to put a bottle in my mouth, he was there. And now that these gray hairs hang from it and there are some wrinkles, he is still here. And he will be here with me in this earth to the last air escape from these nostrils. And oh my, oh my, when that day comes, it may seem sad for the natural side for some. But when air can no longer come through these nostrils, ah, ah, my treasure will be closer than ever before. Years ago, someone wrote a song said, I can only imagine what it'll be like when I stand, what is going to be like? <laughs> no limitations, no, none of that. That's my promise. So I live in view of my promise, and I endure whatever. Like a brother said to me the other day, I told him, Most High, I said, I just want to make you smile. That's why I live. I didn't have a daddy to please. He wasn't around. You're my daddy. You're my father. And I want, everything I do, I want to make you smile. Assets live to make your father smile. The most high here when you say these things. Brother called me and delivered a word. He told me, he was talking, got to a certain point, and he said, the most high say you make him smile. <laughs> I mean, he answered my prayer. Here I'm going to the most high saying, I just want to make you smile. Two or three days later, however long it was, a brother gets a word from the Most High, and he comes to me. He didn't hear my prayer, and he said, the Most High said, you make him smile. <laughs> to see him smile? Whatever. Whatever he want. Whatever he want. The SS job is to be available to him. He would never let the enemy overrun you and take you out. That don't mean you won't experience some pain, some pain, some physical disappointment, some different things. That comes with this life of being a believer. But one thing you can be sure of, your father is right there. As I get ready to close this, I think I remember somebody in a meeting saying, we were talking, and I was saying, you notice how I picked out one of the brothers, and I was like, your child is there, right? Is your child concerned with, like, I'm from the state of Georgia, so we have Georgia Power. Georgia Power is our electric company. And say the bill is due, and you don't have enough money, and you're trying to get the money together. And the lights being off will affect that child. But the child at four, five, six, do you see them walking around the house like, oh my, how are we going to pay the electric bill? Do you see them going to their 10-year-old their, 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 their brother saying, oh my, I saw an electric bill on the table and it's 270 bucks. I wonder if mommy and daddy got enough to pay the electric bill. Do, do you see children doing that? Whose job is that to do that? The head of the house, the father, and, and maybe the mother, if she's working as well or whatever. You're his child. You know what the child knows? As long as I'm with mommy, as long as I'm with daddy, we good. They don't know what it takes to make that work. All they know is because I'm related to them, I'm related to the father. That means he's going to take care of me. Confidence in belonging to someone. When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
All that child got to worry about is pleasing their mom and dad when they tell them to do something. It's the guardian's responsibility to take care of his assets. So when he tell you to seek you first his kingdom and all these other things be added, what he's trying to tell you is don't worry about clothing. Look at the lilies of the field and these other beautiful flowers. I, through my word, when I say let there be, I put a seed in them that every season they're going to be covered and look beautiful. Notice the bird in the air. Small brain inside of him. Does the same thing every day. He tweets, he flies, finds worms, bring worm back to his children. Do you see him crying and weeping and flipping over on the ground, just laying his wings out like, oh, I couldn't find any worms today. Do you see him doing that? <laughs> no, because a word came out of Most High's mouth way back when he created it. That sustains it. And just like the birds of the air and flowers. They're not worried. Why? Because I'm the king of the kingdom. So if you're my asset, all you need to be concerned about is hearing my word. Now this is a totally different thing if you hear his word and you're outside his will. because you, you remove yourself from his protection. If he tells you to go here, but you decide, uh -uh, I'm doing here, then here, which is outside his will, you're responsible for what goes on. But he's so loving, he still may come in and still take care of things. But a mature child don't think like that. They want to be where, I want to be where he wants me to be. But seek ye first the kingdom. And he take care of all the other things. Father, I pray for your people. Thank you for this opportunity to come and minister to them. I don't know who's listening to this right now. And I don't know who will listen to it in the future. But you got me on here for a reason. And what I'm praying. Is that the people that you place here to hear. That they will have an ear to hear. What the spirit is saying to the church. Give them an ear to hear. Your assets. Some of them may feel like they're out in the rain. She let doors are shut and they're in the rain. Lightning and thunder. But help them to know that there's a spiritual umbrella. There's a spiritual cocoon that's covering them. The door, they seem like they're out in the rain. They're really under the umbrella or the covering of the Most High. Psalm 91, 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say it of the Lord, of the I Am. He's my fortress. Uh, help them to see what the world can't see. Help them to see that they haven't lost it all. You're simply proving to them that if the enemy locks you out and calls lightning and thunder and rain to fall, you still exist. You wouldn't be able to know that unless you were able to be locked out. But he's there. You're there, Father. Help them to grow. Give them a distaste for meteorocracy in spiritual things. I, I see, I, I believe that you're going to challenge some of them to change their associations. There's going to be a, a stirring in their heart, an unsettling in their heart. Even when they hear the voices and talk to the people that they have allowed to feed them through the years, there's a discontent coming. That's for somebody. A discontent. It's going to seem like they're going through a wilderness, like they're alone. But it's the place you've ordered. Yeah, somebody. There's a place he's ordered where you're going to be alone. But you're not alone. He's with you. He's going to teach you in this season. Your isolation is going to be your protection. Your seeming rejection by others is going to be your protection. Yes, rejection can be protection. Through it, you're going to learn him and know him in a way you've never known him before. You're going to walk hand in hand with your father. And then there are going to come times where he's going to reach down and pick you up so your feet won't sink in the mud. His feet will never sink in the mud. He's going to walk on mud. And he's going to put you in his arms. You need to know him this way. 
Don't be scared of this trial. Oh, I hear the spirit. Don't you be scared of this trial, my child. In this, you shall know me. In this season, I'm going to reveal myself to you. And don't it seem dark. I've already ordered. I've aligned things so that the sun's going to hit you at least every now and then. To remind you that though you're in the valley, I'm here. Just because the clouds are dark doesn't mean the sun stops shining above. So every now and then he allowed the clouds to form a little hole. A few little rays will come through. You rejoice for those rays. Don't sit there and say, well, I wish all the clouds would go. No, mature and say thank you for the rain. On this dark and gloomy day, you're going to get to a place of maturity where you're going to learn how to be thankful for the small. Immature Christians say, well, well, that little rain, I need the whole sun to be lit. No, you're not an asset. I'm talking to the assets. It may seem dark. But he may let a few rays come through in your processing period. He's processing you. Ah, I, he deals with me differently. For those of you that play pinball, pinball machine, you get that little metal ball, you pull that thing back and you hit it, and it shoots that ball up. And there's a course designed by the manufacturer or whatnot where that ball got different places it can land. Sometimes it hits up against stuff hard. Other times it'll land on something then it shoot it for. Then sometimes it'll land in a spot and points accumulate. Some of y'all as a pinball been wondering, when am I going to hit the jackpot? When am I going to hit and add up points? Stick with the course he got you on. He's going to bring you to the place of increase. And I'm talking about spiritual. Where the points going to build up in the spirit. And you can hear that pinball machine making that noise. You get ready to hit the you get ready to hit a place of spiritual wealth. Make you more accessible. Make you a more grand asset. He controls where you're gonna land as that ball. Stop trying to control your own destiny. Sometimes that ball has to shoot up, and sometimes it goes down. But he knows where you're gonna land. You may not think you needed to go to that place. Sometimes you cry when you think about what you had to go through. But that was a part of your points. He know your final score and you needed to go there for those points spiritually. You may not see it now. But when somebody like you, younger than you, but like you, meaning they went through what you went through. They went through the molestation. They went through the rape. They went through the abuse. Hurry up and mature because they're supposed to sit in front of you. And you're supposed to encourage them. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Grow up. You went there so you could be an asset to somebody. It ain't about you when you give your life to Christ. He takes care of you. You're good. But can he trust you? To look bad enough, long enough, to go through long enough to be an asset that's going to help somebody else. I pray that makes sense. I pray that makes sense. All right. Oh, my. She has been on here a long while. Didn't mean to stay this long today. I thought I wouldn't be on here as long because... Uh, of, of, of just I didn't think I'd be on here this long today. but I guess this is the love he has for you thank you all for that hung in here I pray that something that's been said here today that's blessed you pray for Shep pray for me pray what for me pray that I continue to get wisdom Spiritual wisdom, not just natural wisdom. 
pray that I continue to be strengthened with courage like the Lion of Judah, no matter what I face, courage. Pray for my peace. There's no way I could do what I'm doing and the enemy not be upset. So pray that the peace of God continues to abide. And pray for my strength. That I be continuously energized in my spiritual man from the rich treasuries of his glory. And I don't mind you praying for healing for me, physically. There are people that pray that for me. Just have the understanding that I want his will to be done whatever time he's designed for me to come out of the oven or whatever, so be it. He's the master chef. He's set the, the, the temperature. And I don't think if the biscuit had feelings, they want to sit there and turn brown. But we need the biscuit to stay in there until it is done. So pray for me. I don't mind you praying for my healing and stuff like that. And I don't mind that. As long as we understand with it, thy will be done. And by the way, there are people in the, in the faith community, faith ministries and stuff, prosperity. They don't pray like that. They don't believe in praying thy will be done. They'll tell you, I know what his will is. His will is for you to be healed. See, they wouldn't have understood Paul. Paul prayed that the thing be moved that was thrown in his flesh. The Most High said, my grace is sufficient. Paul came back and said, I will rejoice in my infirmity. Until his will is done, whatever that is he want to do, I'm going to rejoice. Thank him for what I have. And I pray you do the same thing in your life. Stay humble. Stay focused. Stay hungry. For more of the Most High and greater intimacy with Him. Also be strong. Beloved, be strong. You say, I can't stand. Yes, you can. Ephesians 10, Ephesians 6. After you've done all the stand, stand. Why? Because he said, be strong in the Lord. Or be strong in the Most High and the power of His mouth. So I say to you, be strong. That don't mean you don't shed tears. Your Savior was the strongest person I know. I was saved was the strongest person I know. And he shed tears. There are a lot of strong people that shed tears. On their knees shedding tears. But out of their mouth, they're telling the Most High, I will not leave you no matter what. You are my treasure. So be strong and know you are not alone. Shalom.